many visitors tonight. You're very welcome here at St. Elizabeth Seton Parish. We begin our celebration, we begin our contemplation of the gift of hospitality. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Uh, my brothers and sisters, to repair for this Eucharist, we call to mind anything separating us from God or our neighbor. Lord Jesus, you're the divine physician for the ills of our world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Uh, Christ Jesus, you're the source of all unity. For all that separates and divides, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Uh, Lord Jesus, you're the Prince of Peace for the violence in our society. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the turban of Mary, 
as he sat in the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. And bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought, that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food, that you may refresh yourselves, and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, Quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender, choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set these before the three men, and he waited at them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, Where is your wife, Sarah? He replied, There, in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister, in accordance with God's stewardship given to me, to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to the holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone, teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Even, even to a four-year, uh, four and nine-month 
little kid. They look at this and ah, that's not gonna happen. But I was lucky because there was a great aunt Catherine. And great aunt Catherine was about 85 and her laugh was empty. So I had a laugh that I mentioned. And, and, and maybe because I was a little bit older uh, and the two year old and one year old were a bit squirmy, uh, there was no real competition for great aunt Keith's laugh. But I had it to myself. I, I was a place that I could belong. So when we go to up to Grand Aunt uh, Catherine's house, I could go up there and I could sit in her lap and, and I wasn't going to be squirming and she wasn't going to drop me, you know. Uh, and and every, there was peace all around. Uh, and Grand Aunt Catherine really had um, the virtue of hospitality. Uh, she made a home for me in her lap. But she also made a home for my mom. Uh, when my mom uh, my mom went over to uh, Manchester, England in 41, when she was 21. Uh, great timing, you know, right, right, right at the beginning of World War II. And she was a Rosie the River as she worked at Mitchells and Shackleton's, was, which the company made crankshafts for airplanes and for submarines. And mom was under five feet tall, but had an overhead crane. You know, she had a man's job, you know, and she was skilled. And she ran and ran that. And then in 1952, she came out here to the United States. And being a Rosie of the River, uh, got a job as a welder at Reeves uh, on the uh, water units. She had, again, had a man's job, a skilled job. But that was that whole generation at that time. And uh, work was, was difficult for mom coming to the United States. And she was doing hard work and, and real work. And uh, probably punching above her weight, you know. But doing the job very well. Uh, but then she would come home on the bus, and she would come home to live upstairs with the great Aunt Catherine. And she would count how whenever she came home, uh, she had this really warm welcome. Uh, she was hugged, she was given a cup of tea, she was told to sit down and relax. She was home. She was home. And that was so important for everybody. That was so important for someone uh, coming to uh, a new world that she had a place that she was welcome, that she was home. And this weekend, uh, we hear this wonderful gospel story of uh, Martha and Mary. And, and a lot of times we, we focus on, uh, you know, Martha's the one who's making the meal and being the hostess of hospitality, and Mary has this better part of just being present for the Lord. And we focus on that, but, but this year, I would like us to focus on that gift of hospitality. Uh, how you and I follow uh, in the footsteps of our Martha and the Mary and make the Lord welcome. Uh, and we make the Lord welcome with different disguises, different people that cross our paths. And we make room for them. And, and we make them feel welcome. Sometimes a family member, sometimes a grandchild that we become this piece of real estate, we become a lap uh, that they're looking to sit on, you know? There's a lot of different ways, some verbal, some non-verbal, a lot of times non-verbal, that we make the people feel at home, that they are wrong, that they can, can be themselves. Martha and Mary did that for the Lord. We do that for the Lord when we are hospitable in our own ways to family and to strangers. There are so many different ways that we can reach out and make people feel that they are at home, that they are part of what we are part of. So let's pray over that this weekend. Let's pray over how uh, we all need to grow in the gift of hospitality. We all need to be there to welcome the Lord. Let's stand now and confess the gift of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Holy Spirit. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life of the last. We stand in the Lord's presence and we open our hearts 
We pray for our every need. At this Mass, we particularly remember those who have died. We particularly remember Emma Ramazzini and Michael O'Grady. For the repose of their souls and the consolation of their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For the Church, that we may offer hospitality and understanding to all who come seeking acceptance, hope, or God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God will touch hearts, open new opportunities for dialogue, and guide leaders in finding alternatives to violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live a life of service, especially those who care for the sick and those who assist travelers, that they may offer their service joyfully and be renewed by God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom of spirit, that God will free us from fear, attachments, and wounds, so that we may fully respond to all that God asks of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all missionaries, that God will renew them and help them find places and moments of rest in the midst of the many demands of their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may find relief from their sufferings in the mercy of God and the comfort of their caregivers. For all the sick, especially for baby Benjamin Perot, Paris Marino, Michael Demo, Jerry Provongo, Francis Steckel, Mona Trope, Richard Trope, Mary Clayton, El Pudio Maglea, Salvatore Gagliardi, Frank Foley, Mary Ellen Foley, and Anne Bianchi. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful department departed may abide forever in the company of the Lord for all our beloved dead, especially for Emily Ford, Jean Bondi, Martin Creel, Susan Galbraith, James Haplin, and Roy Kieskowski. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you know our prayers of need. Grant what we ask this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are presented, please join in singing number 245, Lord of All Hopefulness.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion very offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth and Satan and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we 
may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.